The history of what is today the Philippines commenced with the arrival of its inaugural human settlers. It's conjectured that approximately 60,000 years ago, these early inhabitants navigated the archipelago using rafts or boats, establishing various communities across the islands. Some of these groups began to flourish and grow into larger communities, gradually evolving into what some scholars suggest could be deemed early states. Austronesians and later speakers of Malayo-Polynesian languages arrived in successive waves, commencing around 4000 BC. Based on available evidence, a jade culture thrived in these territories, dating back to the Neolithic era. Around 1000 BC, it is postulated that the inhabitants of the archipelago had diversified into four distinct societal structures, tribal groups, warrior societies, the Pizzi plutocracy, and the harbor civilizations. Additionally, metallurgy reached the archipelago through trade with India, marking a significant advancement in their technological and economic landscape. Between 300 and 700 AD, the seafaring communities of the islands initiated trade with the Indianized kingdoms in the Malay archipelago and neighboring East Asian principalities. This exchange led to the adoption of cultural influences from both Buddhism and Hinduism, enriching the cultural tapestry of the region. Some cultures in present-day Vietnam exhibited evidence of an extensive trade network, facilitating the exchange of various artifacts and goods such as glass, agate, and gold. Additionally, archaeological findings suggest the presence of imported items, including ear ornaments discovered in sites across the Philippines, Thailand, and Taiwan. During the first century, Indian culture began to exert its influence on the Southeast Asian region. This influence intensified during the reign of the South Indian, Pallava dynasty, and the North Indian Gupta Empire, leading to the spread of Indian culture to Southeast Asia, including the Philippines. Consequently, new kingdoms emerged in the region, deeply influenced by Indian culture and traditions. The oldest Philippine document discovered to date is the Laguna Copperplate inscription, dating back to 900 AD. This inscription, written in Kawi script, details the clearing of a debt owed by the bearer Namwaran and his children by the ruler of Tondo. Remarkably, this document represents one of the earliest instances of the use of mathematics in pre-colonial Philippine societies. The Laguna copper plate inscription also reveals evidence of a standardized system of weights and measures, as demonstrated by precise measurements for gold and other commodities, as well as in astronomy. Furthermore, the presence of various Sanskrit terms and titles, Within the document suggests that the culture and society around Manila Bay were characterized by a fusion of Hindu and Old Malay influences, akin to the cultures observed in Java, Peninsular Malaysia, and Sumatra during that era. In the years preceding 1000, the Philippine Islands were home to various maritime societies, yet there was no centralized political state governing the entire archipelago. Instead, the region comprised numerous semi-autonomous city-states, overseen by a plutocracy, while highland societies also coexisted. These smaller entities often shifted between affiliation with or influence from larger Asian empires, such as Majapahit and the Ming Dynasty of China. Around 1225, the realm of Ma Ai, a pre-Hispanic Buddhist state based in Mindoro, thrived, drawing traders and vessels from the Ryukyu Kingdom to the Empire of Japan. Chao Jukua, a customs inspector in Fukian Province, China, penned the Description of the Barbarous Peoples, detailing trade with this ancient state. The inhabitants were recognized for their integrity in commercial dealings. During the 1300s, much of present-day Indonesia fell under the dominion of the Hindu Majapahit Empire. This empire extended its rule over Luzon Island and the Sulu Archipelago. However, with increased influence came conflicts, as local tribes engaged in relentless guerrilla warfare against the empire. After enduring skirmishes, Luzon's kingdoms ultimately reclaimed independence following the pivotal Battle of Manila in 1365. Similarly, Sulu asserted its autonomy and retaliated by attacking the Majapahit province of Brunei 
only to be expelled by a fleet from the Majapahit capital. The onset of the Islamic era in Indonesia heralded the decline of the Majapahits, with their provinces gradually seceding to form independent sultanates. In 1380, Makdum Karim, an Arab trader hailing from Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca, introducing Islam to the Philippines. Moreover, Sharif ul Hashim, an Arab Muslim explorer, played a pivotal role in establishing the Sultanate of Sulu. He accomplished this by converting the Hindu king, Raja Bhagwinda, to Islam and subsequently marrying his daughter, solidifying the Sultanate's foundation. By the late 15th century, the Sultanate of Magwindanao emerged as a significant power in the region. This period also witnessed the introduction of Islam to the area, facilitated by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, India, and Malay regions. Similar to earlier periods influenced by Buddhist and Hindu cultures, the arrival of Muslim culture left a profound impact on the archipelago, shaping its society, traditions, and institutions. Following Brunei's secession from the Maya Pahit Empire, they sought legitimacy by importing Sheriff Ali, an Arab emir from Mecca, and established themselves as an independent sultanate. Over the next decades, Islam began to take root in the Philippines through a combination of conquest and the conversion of local leaders. Furthermore, the religion gained momentum with the influx of traders and proselytizers from Malaysia and Indonesia, further solidifying its presence in the region. In 1521, the Spanish arrived in the archipelago as part of the expedition around the world, led by Portuguese-born Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Claiming the islands he encountered for the Spanish Empire, Magellan established friendly relations with some of the local leaders and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. Due to the vast expanse of the Philippines as an archipelago, the Spaniards embarked on exploring numerous islands. However, the explorer Ferdinand Magellan met his demise during the Battle of Mactan, where he faced resistance from the local ruler. Over the ensuing decades, additional Spanish expeditions were dispatched to the islands. In 1543, an expedition led to the naming of the islands as the Philippines, in honor of Philip of Austria, who ascended to the Spanish throne as Philip II on January 16, 1556. The name was subsequently extended to encompass the entire archipelago during the Spanish era. European colonization gained momentum when Spanish explorer Miguel López de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565, establishing the first European settlements in Cebu. Through a combination of diplomatic maneuvers and military annexations, which included incorporating local states like the Kingdom of Tondo, the Spaniards established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. In 1578, the Castilian War erupted between the Christian Spaniards and Muslim Bruneians, vying for control of the Philippine archipelago. The Christian troops were notably diverse, comprising people under Spanish rule, including Native Americans such as Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans. Gathered and dispatched from Mexico and South America, they were led by Spanish officers who had previously collaborated with native Filipinos in military campaigns across Southeast Asia. The Muslim side was similarly diverse, receiving support from the Ottoman Empire. Their troops consisted of Malay warriors and expeditionary forces dispatched by the Ottomans, comprising mainly Turks, Egyptians, Swahilis, Somalis, Indians, and others. The conflict concluded with a status quo antebellum, just two decades later, following the conquest of Luzon, significant strides were made in the colonization of the islands and the propagation of Christianity. A cathedral was erected in the city of Manila, accompanied by an episcopal palace. Monasteries and churches sprang up across the islands, leading to a growing number of conversions to Christianity. Additionally, Spanish and Mexican families established settlements in the new territories, fostering stronger communities. Substantial portions of the archipelago fell under Spanish rule, leading to the creation of the first unified political entity known as the Philippines. Spanish colonial administration brought about the introduction of Christianity, the implementation of a legal code, and the establishment of the oldest modern university in Asia.
The Philippines was initially governed by the Mexico-based vice royalty of New Spain before transitioning to direct Spanish rule. Over the following centuries, numerous revolts erupted among the local population in response to perceived abuses by Spanish authorities. Ultimately, Spanish rule came to an end after the conclusion of the Spanish-American War in the late 19th century. In 1898, the Philippines became a territory of the United States. The United States subsequently established insular governments to oversee the administration of the Philippines. In 1907, an elected assembly was established through popular elections. The U.S. made promises of independence to the country outlined in the Jones Acts. As a result, the Philippine Commonwealth was established in 1935, serving as a 10-year interim period preceding full independence. Before attaining full sovereignty in 1942 during World War II, the Philippines fell under Japanese occupation. However, by 1945, the United States liberated the Philippines from Japanese control. Subsequently, the Treaty of Manila was signed in 1946, formally establishing the independent Philippine Republic. The era of Philippine independence was characterized by internal conflicts and a brief period of dictatorship, but also significant progress and development. Manuel Roxas assumed office as the first president of the independent Republic of the Philippines, marking a pivotal moment in the nation's history. The United States officially ceded its sovereignty over the Philippines on July 4, 1946, as planned. Despite this, the Philippine economy remained heavily reliant on United States markets. Following Manuel Roxas' sudden death from a heart attack in April 1948, Vice President Elpidio Quirino assumed leadership until 1953. While communist partisans operated in the islands during the 1950s, they were ultimately defeated. In the mid-1960s, a significant event unfolded as Ferdinand Marcos ascended to power in 1965, maintaining control until 1986. This period encompassed the concluding years of the Third Republic, spanning from 1965 to 1972, followed by the imposition of martial law in the Philippines from 1972 to 1981. Marcos's regime was characterized by dictatorship and widespread instability. In 1986, Ferdinand Marcos was ousted from power and Maria Corazon Aquino assumed leadership. Since then, five other presidents have governed the Philippines up to the present day.